Namaste. Hello, beloved ones, and welcome. Here we are at October 2012. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny when you say the date that we are here it, near the end of 2012. Yeah. It is a little bit of an aha moment. It's beyond, I think it's beyond a little bit of an aha moment. Because Trey, there's been the such one. momentum, you know, in the back of our psyches, there's been this momentum saying 2012 is a grand year. And there's a part of us, I think, that's very childlike, that's waiting for a great wizard or a great, great event to happen. And perhaps that is still coming. However, the energy of this time, right now, we're going to talk more about, and indeed, do you feel the quickening? Whew, and you know, could you agree that this week, more than any other week, time has become fluid? And that's really one of the first things we want to share, is that as we are diving further into um, the energies of the next three months, October, November, and December, remember, these three months are actually one unit even though each month has its own independent energy, and we're gonna discuss October here extensively. However, this is, we, we mentioned it last month, this is blast off. And the first thing that's happened in the blast off moment, especially during this first week of October, is this rapid fluidity of time. If you are trying to still be inside the, let us say, what was the perceived cycle of time mm -hmm. or the way time used to be, you're probably finding yourself overwhelmed, a to-do list that is never ending, not enough space in the day, not enough moments, not even the moment for the moment. So you have to go outside of it. Yeah, what's happened? You know, we've been joking uh, uh, for years now how time is speeding up. Well, it's, it's gone. <laughs> what's different now is you really must step outside of the linear timeline. Indeed, indeed. Because our brain, our earth brain, thinks in terms of past, present, and future. Right. And it tries to organize events in some sort of cascading linear fashion, and that's how it feels stable. So many of you might be feeling a little unstable. Well, you know, speaking of feeling a little <laughs> unstable, I need to say, if you guys just saw my attention divert, we just had these huge beings of crystal and light. They're filling up our room. They're walking in, and normally I don't see them this way before we begin an ensoulment. But if you just got a pulse wave as we were talking, they're here filling up the room. Literally, for those of you that are visual, you're probably already seeing what's happening here this week. And um, I'm sharing this with you because they're coming in very profoundly right now saying, if you are living in the fifth dimension, you will, and they're using the word survive, you will survive this moment very effortlessly. Um, and this is, again, we, we're talking about time. If you're trying to stay anchored into that third dimension and you notice they've kind of got me doing this, they're saying you're just going to be whipsawed. That the fifth dimensional overlay it is very, very important to be really diving into the fluidity of that. And so I just, I needed to just bring them forward. They wanted to be heard, Sri. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those moments when I feel like my skull is too small. It is. You know, there's so much energy. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> so uh, the piece we, I want to remind you as, as we're chatting this way this month is that your brain has the habit of organizing things linearly, and yet your being, your true essence is well beyond this earthly brain, is well beyond the habit of the habit. And so this is kind of your final wake-up call in so many ways. Ooh. It's either time to let go of linearity, which means letting go of your ego's right. grip on your experience, or dive back into that matrix and say, you know, I'm just going to play really good in polarity and I'm not going to have any more conflict. And that brings us to this week. This week in October was the week to set the stage for these three months. During this week, we had a presidential debate in the United States. We if had you call it that. whatever it was, it was. <laughs> and there is um, an extraordinary amount of things as far as um, picking sides, polarities getting large and lofty issues coming forward, certainly on the world stage, and remember it's through October 6th, we're looking at the entire Sunday through Saturday period of the first week of October, right. um, and we're seeing a lot of culminating energies that came in on October 6th. We just had a drone shot down over Israeli airspace. We had a South, Cor uh, excuse me, a North Korean shoot his entire platoon and walk across the DMZ just moments ago. We've had many other issues that have come forward this week. We are watching 
watching Iran debating other issues. We're seeing women's rights issues. We're seeing world rights issues. Turkey and Syria are now shooting at each other. We're seeing things heating up. And because of that, this week in October, when we look back, you're going to want to look back and say what happened during the first week in October that actually foreshadowed the events of the next three months, meaning uh, the months we're in, October, November, December. This week, which culminates October 6th, and if you're looking at this video after that, it absolutely does not matter, because what you're going to learn is that there is a call within you to stop hiding. Now, I want you to really hear that. You had the month of September as the month to anchor. The month of October, for those of you that choose to go forward with this, is the month to come out of hiding. It is the month to anchor the wisdom within and to bring it forward. We're, we're calling it the month of the teachers, meaning that this is the month where you really have the opportunity to ignite the inner teacher, the inner wisdom, and to be present with that energy on the planet. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go start a class. What it does mean is, can you ignite within thyself the reason that you took form? You mm -hmm. took form because you are a master. You took form because you are a teacher. This is the month to really ignite that. This is the moment of, if not now, when? You know, this is truly about your authenticity. Mm -hmm. To be a teacher is to live the work, meaning to live the wisdom exactly. of the teaching. Mm -hmm. This does not mean you must be a charismatic public speaker. It must mean you. It, it means you enjoy the charisma of your soul, well, the because, charisma of exactly. your authenticity. Remember, it's your life that is the greatest teacher of all. The expression of who you are and how others are able to receive your presence is the greatest form of teaching. Now, I'm going to get up and check the settings on the camera for okay. a second. So bear with us. And as Sri does that, I'm going to continue to share with you that there was one other thing that happened this week, and we actually have it right here, all nine pages of it. Um, earlier this week, Sri and I were called to take a moment and just kind of check out of everything that was going on inside of our own fluid time bubble, time capsule, which is the words these beings around me are giving me. They're saying it's like, imagine that they're saying, imagine thyself in a fluid capsule of time and that you're navigating the world through this fluid capsule without being affected by it. So it's a beautiful way to, to look at the way we're working through time. And as Shri and I sat down and were gazing into this fluid time capsule, something really beautiful happened. The Archangel Zodkiel came forward, and Archangel Zodkiel began by sharing with us that um, essentially these are the revelations for 2013. And they're very, very, very profound, um, they're very intense. And we're going to share some of this with you right now and explain how we've been invited to release this information. And so when we sat down, what basically happened was um, the Archangelic realm basically said there are 13 questions. And that, you know, no, no coincidence, there are 20, 13, 13 questions. That there are 13 questions that regardless of what you're personally asking or what you're sensing, these are the universal questions being asked by all of humanity and that they might, the phraseology might shift with personality or culture, but these, this was the heart of the 13 questions. And Archangel Zodkiel began and shared, and what we're going to share with you right now is just what Zodkiel said and the 13 questions that were given. So take a breath, bring your hand to your heart, and this I also found very profound that these are all about 2013, and, and they very rarely give us predictions and prophecies for the coming year, but it came in this week, this first week of October was another thing that happened, very powerful week. And truly, this is a response to what's in the hearts of humanity. Exactly. And so Archangel Zodkiel began like this. Beloved ones, we offer to you the 13 questions that are beating within the light presence of those who are living the journey of your world. As humanity is now ready to experience the cosmic sunrise and the gathering of universal light, the responses to these questions is best served as shared through the blue star bar. Mm -hmm. These beings of great love and presence have been 
and will always be ever present for those in the experience of density. The energy of the blue starborn carries at its essence the healing rays of light that unify all streams of divine love. Remember them as the Essene, and remember them as the healing pulse that is calling out through all manifest forms of love. Here are the questions we offer as the summation of those you are all asking. These questions are not aligned with any country, creed, personality, or ego-based strata. They simply are, and it is the Blue Starborn who will respond on behalf of us all. So we want to offer you, um, we're, we won't read all 13, but we're going to read just maybe the first few questions so you kind of get a feel for the questions that Zodkiel revealed. And then all of the rest of this was delivered by the Blue Starboard in direct response to these questions. And what we have been guided to do is to release one question with the Blue Starborn response every week for the 13 weeks leading up to the new year. So I believe that starts in about two weeks from now. If you are not a subscriber to our newsletter, be a subscriber. Get on the newsletter list. These are going to be free. But starting in mid-October, every week for 13 weeks, we will be revealing the next question in the order these questions were given to us with the response from the Blue Starborn. This is a very kind of a very powerful, powerful countdown and preparation that we were given this information during this very powerful blast off period of October through no December 2013, 2012, and that they came in during this first week of October, which was that week of setting the stage. Remember, this has been a very powerful culminating week. And so as we work with both the question and the uh, ascended response to the question, we will be cultivating ourselves to really call forth a, a wonderful state of beingness mm -hmm. as we come to the end of this year. And maybe just the first few questions that we'll receive in October, like the first two. Here's what you'll be uh, receiving coming up very soon. The first question is, why has the planet called forth the great energies of war once again? Actually, it's World War. World War. Why has the planet called forth the great energies of world war once again. Take a breath. I just felt a lot of you hold your breath. And again, we, we are, we're sharing this in the, in the way that they asked us to share it. And so starting in two weeks, that'll be the first question and the response by the Blue Starborn. Please allow yourself to track with these 13 questions and the answers. This is a very powerful time. And the more that you track with this, the more that you open yourself ascended state, the more that you expand, the easier and the more expanded you will be through this time. Remember, as these beloved beings that are with us right now so visibly are saying, put yourself in this capsule of time. You are now the time traveler. You are the time warrior. You are in this beautiful capsule, this fluid capsule of time, navigating all of this space and being able to be the wisdom-filled, presence-held teacher of this space. How about another one, Shri? Well, the next question, and all, each of these touches on such um, uh, topics that are so important for they all are. of us, and, and cul culminate really with a, a beautiful sense of our role and our place in the cosmos. The next question is, is there a future on this planet for our children? Mm. And what are we to do? Take a breath again. And so we, again, invite you to stay with us over the next 13 weeks, starting in uh, another week from now when we release the first one and these answers from the Blue Starborn, as we were asked to do by them, remembering that you are being heard. You are loved, you are heard, you are appreciated, and the universe is answering. The, the support, the love, the presence is here in ways it has never been before. So let's take in a deep, beautiful cleansing breath. Let's let it out with sound. Sigh. And let that beautiful smile come to your face because when we exhale with a smile, we send the signal to the universe that says, I am here, I am ready, I am open. I get it, <laughs> and it's a beautiful gift. 